This video is going to continue some of the work that we have started with ratio tape diagrams. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video is how can we use tape diagrams to solve more complex ratio problems? We're going to take a look at three different types of ratio problems now that we've had a chance to practice using the tape diagram method. Our first example, we'll take a look at comparing the ratio of three items rather than two that we've done previously. So in this example, we have three students who were paid for babysitting, and we're trying to figure out how much less Lisa made than Mary. And all we know right now is the ratio of their rate. Without the tape diagram method, I could imagine myself using guess and check to figure out how much they each made that added up to 120 and then using that to figure out the answer to the problem. But the tape method, tape diagram method is a really quick way for me to visually see how much each student made. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up for Lisa, Megan, and Mary. As I set these up, I was mindful to make sure that I lined these boxes up these rectangles up on the left hand side and I was careful that I use the same size square or rectangle for each representation. What I can see now is that there are 10 total rectangles and they together make $120. So I know that it's 120 divided by my 10. Each rectangle is going to be worth $12. So that's part of it, right? But then if I'm trying to figure out how much less Lisa made than Mary, I'll see that Lisa has two $12. Mary has five $12 to make a total of 60. So 60 minus 24 tells me that Mary made $36 more. And I've answered that question. Really simple and straightforward with my ratio tape diagram. A second example of when you might use tape diagrams for more complex problems is when we're looking at comparing two different ratios. In this example, we know the ratio of Evan to Michael's M&Ms and Patrick to Evan's M&Ms, but we're trying to figure out a third combination. We want to figure out the ratio of Patrick's M&Ms to Michael's. Again, this tape diagram is going to help us out. But we have to be really careful, particularly this time, that the length of the rectangles are exactly as they need to be. I'm going to start by doing a tape diagram just for Evan to Michael's M&Ms of four to five. Now that I have Evan and Michael recorded as four to five, I then also have to compare Patrick and Evan. In this case, the ratio is 2 to 1, as we can see up here. But I have to be mindful of this fact that Evan's box needs to be the same length. So I'm actually going to make his box the same length as it was above. So it matches here. This matches this. But this time, Evan's number represents 1. So I'm not going to break it up. And Patrick then needs to be twice his size. The ratio was two to one. So here is one length of Evans, and here is a second length of Evans. So now this is a ratio of two to one, while I'm keeping Evans lengths identical in both ratios. But now, since my goal is to compare Patrick to Michael, I'm going to look right here, right? Patrick and Michael. And these are not broken up to the same size. So I'm going to take my pen here and break Patrick's box up into the same size piece as all the others. And now I can see that if I break these up equally, it's easier to compare, right? I can see that Patrick has eight of these pieces compared to Michael's five. So the ratio of Patrick to Michael, Patrick coming first, is eight to five, and of course I could write that in multiple ways, but the ratio is eight to five. This would have been really complicated if I didn't have a visual to help me out. 
The last example we're going to use this tape diagram for is when we are changing ratios. This one's a bit trickier. So we know the ratio of Abby to Merrick's money is a ratio of 2 to 9, but then I'm throwing something new at you. I'm asking you to look at what a new ratio would be if I change it by taking some of Merrick's money and giving it to Abby. However, with my tape diagram, I can still set this up as I've set up all the previous problems. So here is my tape diagram ready to be set up. And as before, I was careful to make sure I lined everything up appropriately. Now, there's one piece of information here that I haven't recorded, and that's that we know Merrick's total. So I'm actually going to write my line here below Merrick rather than on the right-hand side as I've done in the past. Because we know Merrick has nine pieces, totaling 45, I know that if I do 45 divided by 9, I'll find out that each one of his rectangles is worth $5. That also tells me then that Abby currently has $10. Now, the problem tells us that Merrick is giving Abby $15. In my tape diagram, if each rectangle or each square is $5, that means that Merrick is giving up five, ten, fifteen dollars, three squares, and giving them to Abby. So we can add that here. One, two, three squares are moving from Merrick to Abby. That's a little messy. Sorry guys, my pen's a little off. But now I have a new model and it shows me how much the ratio is of Abby's money to Merrick's money. Abby now has five pieces in her representation, and Merrick used to have nine, but gave three of them away, and so he now currently has six. The ratio is five to six. Perhaps without this tape diagram, we would have had a hard time knowing how much 15 represented out of the ratio, and we wouldn't have known that we could just move three pieces from Merrick to Abby. So remember the essential question of this video asked us to look at how we could use tape diagrams to solve more complex ratio problems. And we had a chance to see three different types of ratio problems that you can use tape diagrams for. We'll of course be practicing more in class. This was just the first initial preview that you'll see. But be sure to watch anything and write down any questions you might have.